Hello, welcome back to You Are My Borough. Thanks again, as ever, for joining us. Uh, it's myself, Dom Shaw. I'm joined by Scott Wilson. And we're both delighted to be joined by our latest very special guest, Sol Bamba. How are you doing, Sol? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, no, thank you. Thank you for coming on, Sol. We uh, we, we really appreciate the time. And um, we're going to have a look back at your time at Borough, obviously, um, and, and, and obviously have a look at last season and discuss what the future holds for you first. Ju just before we started... Um, you were taught. You, you said you know you loved looking back on your time at Borough, but you you were at Borough for a relatively short space of time, and yet you had a huge impact on the fans. And it feels it's always felt like the club had a had a big impact on you as well. Exactly, I was just about to say that. Though. I think I see that this other way. I think uh, the fan has a huge impact on me and the family because, obviously, coming through everything I I went through with my with my health issue and uh, coming back and and do. What I love to do is playing football and the way the fans and the whole club um, and the city took me on, like it was, it was unbelievable, really. So I will never forget my time up there and uh, to be the club, the city, everyone associated with Middlesbrough will always be on my heart. So to talk a little bit so about how the Borough thing came about, I mean, we obviously know Neil Warnock was was a kind of big factor in it, but did it yeah. come out the blue for you? Was it something that had been bubbling along for a while? How how did the first kind of seed of Borough get sown, if you like? I think it was it was really a favour from uh, from the gaffer because people think it was all the <laughs> plan and everything, obviously because of the relationship we got. But honestly, it was literally just come up, uh, get fit, and, uh, and I just want to help you out. But the minute I go there, obviously playing against Middlesbrough over the years and I've you know, been in the game for a long time, I knew a few of the players. So straight away, we, we, we had a good relationship. And when I trained, the gaffer and the lads were surprised like how fit I was. And uh, they, they actually mm -hmm. thought I could, I could do a job. So that's, 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 that's how it came about, really. So, you know, it wasn't calculated. It was purely like the gaffer helping me how like he did all through my career. And obviously, the minute I walk in there, you know, um, the people around the club behind the scene, like, you know, it have to be said, like, they, they're amazing. You know, the, the kid man, the people yeah. at the kitchen, the chef, you know, every single person in the club, like, they're down to herbs. They're always here when you need help. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a special club and it's special people up there. And it's the people who make that club special. I always said that. So, you know, I, I fell home straight away. And obviously, when I was playing, I just tried to repay them, you know, all, all the good things they give it to me. Did, did you know, so I know you said there that maybe Neil and, and some of the players were surprised by how fit you were, but did you know coming up that that you were fit and that in your back of your mind, did you think, you know, I'm, I'm coming here to make an impact, I'm coming here to get a contract? Yeah, I mean, I, definitely. I always, you know, in the back of my head, it was like, you know, I have to show them I can still play and, uh, and, 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 and I'm fit. Uh, I worked very hard um, during my, during even my, my treatment, during chemo. I, I was fortunate to feel okay. So I was going to the gym and everything. So, you know, I knew I was, I was fit, but I needed to go back in and, uh, you know, um, have a feeling for a plane and see how it goes, you know, because you can run and do gym as long as you like, but when you train with the team, it's different. So I, sh I still needed to, to, to figure that out. But the minute I start training and touching the ball and, you know, straight away, I felt, I felt like I was, uh, I could do a job for at least a season and uh, the player made it so, so much easy for me as well. But, you know, I knew I was, I was in a good place, but I didn't realise how fit I was until I, I trained with, with mm. the lads up there. Did, um, did, did the kind of idea of getting back and, and still being a footballer, was that important when you were going through the treatment and everything? Because it, it probably would have been easy for you to say, do you know what, that's it, that's it for me now. I've been through all this. I've had a good career. I've done this. I've done that. I've done the other. That's enough for me. But was getting back a, a big mental part of it for you? Scott, you spot on. And I think that was that was massive for me. And I think that gave me the drive to go through the chemo as well because... It was a couple of things in there. I didn't want it to finish like that, you know, but yeah. you know, on my own term, if you like. Um, and that helped me massively through the through the treatment because even when I was down, I was like, you know, I need I need, I need to stand up and go again because I want to play one more season at least. So, you know, it was very, very important for me to to finish on my turn, like I said. So, you know, it, it helped me out massively because like you said, I could easily say, listen, I've done it. You know, I'm tired. I, you know, health is the most important thing. Yeah. But I think you always have to have a target. Uh, and that's what I had through my treatment. And I think that helped me massively. But honestly, and it's no, I'm not saying that, you know, 
just for the Bowl of fans or for you guys, you know, I, I think I could have, I couldn't go to the better better club to help me out and have yeah. that season because, you know, I played for different other clubs. They don't have that vibe and the family atmosphere like 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 up there. So it was it was special for me. And I think everything clicked really. It was a perfect club for me. The people up there was very nice to me. And uh, that's that's why I ended up uh, having the season I had. And, and, yeah. and having been through what you went through, Sol, did, did that change your mindset at all? Because, you know, you've told me in the past that you've always been incredibly positive and you think that helped you through it. But then I remember talking to you after the Man United penalty, which which we'll talk about later. But you said then, <laughs> kind of, when you've when you've been through what I've been through, kind of what what's taking a penalty? You know, it, it's it's not life or death. It's a it's a penalty. You score or you miss. Did it, did it change your mindset in 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 your everyday football? On on that sense, Dom, yeah, absolutely. Because before, you know, football was everything for me. I lose a game and I come back home and I'm moody and I'm annoyed, you know, because I, lo I lost the football game. But after that, obviously, it changed a bit your perspective. And listen, I'm always, I always knew I was I was lucky uh, to be in good health and to, 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 to do the best job in, in the world, in my opinion. So I knew I was lucky in that sense. But I think being sick and going through all this made me realise even more, and you spot on about that penalty, that's that's where my man changed my mindset has changed a bit in terms of like you know if I lose a football game I mean no it's still but it's not the end of the world and I think that's that's how my man my mindset changed massively. Let's talk a little bit about Neil Warnock because it was interesting you called him the gaffer there and he was on here a couple of months ago with us actually before Huddersfield absolutely smashed Burr out the park <laughs> and obviously he kept them up. But um, are you surprised, Scott? He, really, some guy isn't he? He's some guy. <laughs> Uh, Scott, I don't know where to start. I love the guy, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I still call him Gaffa. I will always call him Gaffa. You know, he's yeah. my Gaffa, and uh, he's, he's he's a special man. Listen, he's, it's not just football to he me. Really it's called beyond, you know. And uh, he's, everything about him is great. You can talk to him about anything. He will help you out. You know, he's been massive through all my treatment with with my missus and and the kids. You know, he's he's a top man. I, ca I can't speak higher about about him. But football wise, I'm not surprised. Got to be fair, you know, he's he always. I've been in the in the dressing room with him playing against former club. Trust me, he's not losing any games. He's playing against former club. That's for sure. <laughs> tell us, so, tell us about the time for again twice in the first next season. So I think oh well, listen, I'm worried about you there, Scott, because I guarantee you, he's not going to lose those two games. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us about the time, Solly. The first time he signed you, weren't you playing against him and you slide you slid him for a slide tackle or something in the dugout and he grabbed you and said you'd like playing for me or so or words to that effect? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Though. I was uh, I was playing for Leicester at the time and we played um Leeds and he was the manager there. And uh, I actually tackled him on 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 the sideline, and uh, and he loved that. And he said, like, he grabbed me, and he said, you you shouldn't sign for me. And if you sign for me, it's two thing I will make you is you be a Premier League player. You will stop dribbling, thinking you're back in bar, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I will make you win, win a lot of money. And I loved that about him. And he came <laughs> to see me at, at the end of the game as well, and he said, like, have you talked about what I said? I said I'm playing. I wasn't thinking about all this, but since that day we've been we've been in touch, and he's been fantastic. And everything he said, it came through really because with him I was a better player, because he was very clear and um, and and uh, about how he want me to play. Because sometimes I was guilty of it, but most of the time, especially when uh, Sven Goran Eriksson was my manager, he liked to play a certain way. So obviously from the back, I needed to take more risk and try to, to play the perfect pass or dribble when, he, when I needed to do it. And fans sometimes like didn't understand that and had a go at me, which I understand. But that was the way the, the manager wanted me to play. But Warnock made yeah. it very clear. He said to me, so listen, you're a defender, you kick it and you head it. I don't want you to do <laughs> anything more. And that's, that's, that's what I've done and, uh, and, and it was effective. And, and the thing with, with Neil as well is he he's really good at kind of transforming the whole mood of a club. Because when he yeah. came to Middlesbrough, you know, they were in deep, deep trouble at the bottom of the yeah. championship. He kept them up. He then had the whole COVID era, which for everyone right. was really difficult. You know, yeah. no fans, yeah. keeping football going, keeping the interest going, etc. cetera. Um, and, and for all that, obviously, Borough have, have moved on under Michael Carrick and, and hopefully will be challenging promotion next season. A lot of that process with Neil in terms of bringing the club back together, I think. And I guess you got there, that that unity was 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 there, wasn't it? it was, you know, you kind of were able to buy into that. 
Absolutely. And I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that, uh, uh, Scott, because I think it's important for people to, 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 to acknowledge that and recognize that because it wasn't easy. And like you said, Middlesbrough at, at that time was in trouble. He's very good at that, to come in and steady the ship and, uh, and he can move on and the club is in a better place. And I think Steve Gibson, the owner, he recognised that. You guys recognised that. And I think if he wasn't there for that period, it would have been more difficult for the club. And uh, I think he, he, built, he built the foundation for now for, for, for Michael Carvick to come in and, and kick on. And I think it's very important to recognise that because the Gaffer would never say that and never talk about it. But it does hurt him when people said, you know, he just come in and do a job or he played a certain way because he's, he's a confident guy. He's believing in himself. And sometimes his work is not recognised. And uh, up there, you guys does recognise that. And uh, he loved it as well up there. He, he always said he always wanted to manage the club. He did it. You guys were very good to him, the fans and all this. And, uh, you know, when we both talk, all we talk about is Middlesbrough, you know. So he loved his time. <laughs> he, he was replaced, obviously, by... Chris Wilder Sol, who came in and and initially things went incredibly well, didn't they? And, mm-hmm. and, and Borough at one stage looked likely to win promotion, really, not not just a, a, a possibility. What what went wrong that season under Wilder? And and if you don't mind me asking, there was obviously the Burnley links. Was was yeah. that an impact? Did that have an impact in the squad? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Dom, and that's, I was about to go there. I think when he came in, he made it very clear and uh, the way he wants to play is attractive from player because he plays from the back, movement everywhere, uh, everyone is involved attacking and defending and obviously the players will take on to that. And his training session is very, very good and enjoyable. So, you know, players bought into it straight away. His attention to details as well is good. He's a good motivator. You know, I still speak to Chris. He's, he's, he's a very, very good guy. I liked him. But I think you spot on the Burnley link. That's what, that's what killed him, really, because he's an experienced manager. He should have straight away said, hey, listen, I'm not interested. I'm here for a long ball. Um, or I'm interested. I want to go. And, and that's clear. But the problem is, and I, I was guilty of that as well as a player, player will look for any reason to have excuses. So the minute we start losing game or during games, people was like, well, here you go. The gaffer is not going to be here anyway. Or he didn't clear it. And, you know, we had a young group as well, Dom, if you remember. So some players were like, you know, don't know where to stand. And he was even talking to us in a meeting and said, like, you know, we'll see what happened. He wasn't clear to us because you can have sometimes, you know, two different messages for, for us and the media. But he wasn't, he had two different messages. That was the problem. If he at least said to us, like, listen, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here, I'm here for long. But in the media, I'm going to say that we will be fine. But it wasn't the case. And obviously the player didn't know where to stand. Myself and other players, we were older. We understand the game. You know, I remember me and him having a mm-hmm. conversation in the, in the physio room and he did said, you know, so I'm, I'm like any other players. If something come up better uh, 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 in, in terms of like better league, because at the time Burnley was were in the Premier League, or better contract uh, money-wise, I have to think about it. And we all understand that. That's the business we're in. But I think he should made, made that clear with, with, with the players and, uh, and they will have a better chance. But, you know, he'd be the first one to... to I think he did. I, I saw him talking in the media yeah, yeah. and said, like, that was... Exactly. See, I mean, Scott, so he knows that was one of his mistakes. But I think the following season, I think... That was put out to bed and, uh, you know, it could have done better. But, you know, football, you had a bad star and, you know, everything started questioning. And, you know, unfortunately that happened. But I think I think the Burnley link was was a massive, massive, massive uh, uh, um, thing he needed to clear out before, before and he didn't, unfortunately. There were um, high points in that time, though. And obviously we have touched on one of them. So let's let's go there. Let's go to Old Trafford. Um now, you, you started that game on the bench, didn't you? If memory serves me right. Came yeah. on in the first half. Uh, so, no, I, mean, I, I came guess... on... No, actually, it's got, I came on, like, five minutes to go. Um, yeah, because there was the heat map. There was the heat map. That's wasn't right. there the picture yeah, of the heat map. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, what are you, so what are you thinking when you get the nod to say, right, on you go? You know, I mean, you're obviously very experienced. You've seen an awful lot then. But it's still Old Trafford. It's still an FA yeah. Cup tie that's on a knife edge. How, how did that feel, first of all, before we even get to the penalties? Yeah, it's tough, Scott, because, you know, exactly like you said, people always said, yeah, you've been there before, you've got experience and all that. But like everybody else, you go into to a game, it's five minutes to go, and you're a defender, and I haven't touched the ball until the pen. 
So I'm like, Oof. you know, if I go in there and I made a mistake and we lose the game, I'm in, I'm in massive trouble there. So, you know, you go all down your head. But at the same time, like, like, like the gaffer said to me at the time, go there, make sure we, you see it through. We go to penalties and we go change. So that was my job going there. But I haven't touched the ball. I haven't done any clearance or anything like that. And yeah. we get to the, to, to, to the penalties. But the penalties are def- is, is, is a different story altogether because I think what was important is like to calm everybody down. And that's, that's, that's what I did when the gaffer said straight away, like, um, we want to take one. And I was like, I'll take the first one. And everybody looked at me and said, like, so you taking the first pen? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take. And even, even the gaffer looked at me like that. And he was like, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll take the first one. So when all the players seen that, they were like, oh, if Saul take it, you know, I can do it. So everyone's like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll yeah. do it. And I think yeah, that, was, yeah, yeah. that was my plan all along to make sure everyone is calm and, you know, we just go to penalties. Yeah. Because at the end, I didn't take the first one. I think I think the, the, the third or fourth. Um, yeah. And it was just it was just actually to, to, to make sure everyone, like, is calm and ready to go. And, 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 and I, they were, I mean, they were all fantastic penalties. That's oh, kind yeah, of my yeah. main recollection of it. But, but I think yours was the pick of the lot. No, you've been nice, Scott. You've been nice. I think it's just... <laughs> no, I think it was just maybe the the, the way I took it, it was it, it was casual and you know that's what yeah. people said. And nobody expect me to take one, you know. So that's why they, they all be nice again and said, Oh yes, Soul's penalty was the best one. But you know, I remember um Johnny took an unbelievable one, you know. Um mm-hmm. uh Pearls, Pearls, like you know, did a very good one on the top corner. You know, yeah. Uh, so no, I think I think people just be nice, like for my one, I think. Huh. And I, I remember Sol, and, and I can't remember whether it was half time and extra time or before the penalties, but I remember seeing you kind of going round and talking to players and putting an arm around the shoulder of the players that that day. Did did you did you see that as part of your role at Borough, almost kind of like an unofficial coach in a kit in in some senses because of all the experience you brought? Yeah, absolutely. And and and, and I have to say, I have to give credit to, to Lee Warnock and, and Chris Wilder because they allowed me to do that and they wanted me to do that, you know. And I think what is crazy is, you know, I was the older uh, player in the dressing room, so, you know, the players always come and, 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 and talk to me, ask me for advice and everything. And when we had... Uh, when we had dinner, when we were playing away at the hotel, we used to stay on the table for hours and they said to me, so, oh, tell me how was the World Cup or how was it to play in the Premier League or playing against this? And I think that's that's what we're in the game for. You have, you have to give back to the younger lads, you know. Funny enough, just an hour ago, I spoke to Mark Bola, you know, uh, because we got that relationship. And they, they're all good kids, very, very good good kids and good players. They want to listen, they want to learn. You know, and I think that's credit to them. But that was my role, Dom, definitely. And I, and, and, I, and I liked it because that's why I want to, 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 to transit after to be, a, to be a coach and a manager. So I think it was perfect for me. And how, how have you found that transition since Borough then, moving into the coaching side of everything? Has it, has it been relatively seamless because you'd started a little bit of it or has it still been quite a big change? It's still a change. I think it, it, the transition has been smooth, and uh, I've been I've been doing it, working with the under eighteen and twenty three um, at Cardiff. Anyway, even when I was playing, so you know I sort of been doing it for the last five years. But I think what is the massive difference for me is you can impact. You try, but you can impact when uh, as much as when you were a player. And I think before you know you can you know you tackle or you you made a difference by a pass or sometimes I, I, I score a couple of goals and that's when you make the difference. But when you're on the touchline, you can try as much as you want and try to direct and change tactic and everything, but you can impact it as much as you want. And and that's why I found yeah. it very very difficult and different. Just one more looking back on Borough. Um, the was it Bournemouth away? There was there was the game where at the end of the game uh, you went over to the fans and the fans were singing your name and you got quite yeah. emotional. Um, what why was that and and what do you remember about it? That that was actually um, my best uh, memory of of playing for Bower. You know, I've got to say I think everyone mentioned the the Man United and all that because of the drama and the penalty, but that was special for me because. You know, I started the game, um, we, 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 we did well, um, I was man in the match and the way the fan like recognised that and, and sang my name at the end of the game and all that, and the, Chris Waldo pushed me to go and, and celebrate with them mm-hmm. was, was special. And, and, and back then, everything came back to me of like, you know, 
everything I went through. And that's why I got emotional. But I don't like, it was difficult. And that's why um, uh, Chris Walder came to me and said, said to my ears, like, you need to enjoy those moments because, you know, you're at the end of your career and you deserve it. But I don't like the intention. I've never been like this. I'm a, I'm a team player. So that's why I was a bit shy. But it's why, you know, you have to, you know, um, take those moments and appreciate it. And I, and I certainly did. But it was definitely one of a, one of my, my best memory were for to playing for the club. And and is that is that your advice to younger players now? Because you know, you were what 35, 36, 37 at the time. Is that your advice to even players who are 18, 19, 20? Kind of cherish every moment really, and because it doesn't last forever, does it? Exactly, Dom, absolutely. And I think, you know, I remember being 16 when I start playing professional and I had uh, uh, players, I actually uh Pochettino at the time was saying to me, like, you know, enjoy it because he goes quick. And I was like, why is he saying, you know, he's, he's, I'm only 16, I've got 20 years, you know, and before you know it, this is it. And, you know, I was fortunate to play a couple of World Cup, um, you know, playing final in African Cup of Nation and all that, uh, losing all of them, unfortunately. But it goes like that and you don't, you don't enjoy it. I got promoted with Cardiff to the Premier League and I feel exactly that, like I haven't, you know, enjoy as much as I should. And now and I'm, I'm ending my career. And I look back and I said, you know, maybe I should have two more drinks or go and party with them or do this or do that. And I think it's exactly that, Dom. You have to enjoy every single moment because it goes very, very, very quick. And and how was how have you found it at Cardiff? Um, how how was last season for you? Because obviously, um, you know, some difficult times, but there in the end. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's all matter, to be fair, Scott, because I think um, it, it was a difficult um, season for the club. To be fair, the last couple of seasons have been difficult. We, you know, yeah. the club changed manager very, very often. Um, yeah. You know, different style of play. Um, it's, a, it's a great club. It's a capital club. You know, um, I mean, that's mm. what every club will say to you. They deserve better. But, you know, I think um, a club at this side and, and, and with the... the, the the money they've got, if you like, they shouldn't be in that situation. So it was tough. And yeah. obviously, me playing for the club for so many years, you know, you don't want to see um, the club I love in yeah. that situation. So the main thing was to to stay in the league. That's what we did. And uh, and I enjoyed it. And to be back in here and start my coaching career in here, I, I couldn't ask for anything better because it, it's a club who mean a lot to me. But, you know, we've done the job and that's, that's, the, that's the best thing we can hope for. Yeah. Be, be, before we have a chat about Michael Carrick's borough and, and what you've made of them, what what does the future look like for you now then? And and, and his management, what what you ultimately want to want to go into? Yeah, definitely. I think what was very good is is it, I always said it all along, even before I start. I want to I want to learn my trade and 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 go as smooth as I can. You know, it's not because you play the game for whatever years you think you know everything. You know, and the best example is Michael Carrick. You know, look at the success and 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 how good his team play. And uh, I, I love his how he carried himself because he's been an unbelievable player. We all know that, but you won't know because he doesn't show off. He doesn't, you know, shower anything like that. And I love that. And looking that, that's that's the type of manager I want to be. And he went away, learned his trade, and look at him now. So I want to do it exactly like that. So he's he's, he's progressing, carrying on coaches as much as I can. And whenever whenever I'm ready, I, I will want to be a manager. And you, you said about kind of Carrick and, and Borough there. I mean, you know, as, as you said earlier with speaking to Mark Bolly, you obviously know quite a lot of the lads. And certainly everything that we hear is that it's, you know, the camp is kind of as good as it's been. Yeah. Um, for, you know, for a while, there's a real sense of togetherness there. Yes, they missed out at the end of last season, but obviously mm -hmm. from where they were when, when yeah. Michael took over, they're just making the was was some kind of achievement, really. And it, it feels pretty optimistic around the players, certainly up here. Yeah, and I'm not surprised, Scott, to be fair. And to, 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 exactly like you said, to be in contact with the player and asking a lot of questions, because I'm on a learning curve, ask a lot of questions to the players. When we played uh, them here at Cardiff, I went to the office and seen uh, uh, Michael Carrick and... Uh, uh, and and Woodgate and have a good chat and everything and yeah. try to have an understanding of like how they go about you know training and games and all that and it was fascinating and what I love like I said already is like how down to earth both are as you know they un yeah. they had unbelievable career but they don't pretend they know everything and uh, the way they translate that to the players is unbelievable and I'm not surprised the success they got because you know they 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 hard worker they committed 
and uh, and they know how to deliver the message to the players. And obviously, because of the career they had, the player respond to it straight away. So, you know, yeah. the, the, the future is definitely bright on Middlesbrough. And I think what they need to do, we all know Steve Gibson is, is probably one of the best uh, owner, owner around in, in, in the country. So uh, he need time. But he would he, he'd be given time and uh, he need to be quit well like he did. And I'm, I, I won't be surprised if, if he goes automatic next year. I don't want to put him in the pressure, but, you know, he'd be, mm-hmm. uh, he's definitely one of my favourites to, 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 to be in a top six minimum. Yeah. And, and, and you've talked a lot there about, you know, how, uh, Michael Carrick's playing career and, and Woodgate's playing career. Um, obviously an incredible career. Did you come up against... Certainly, certainly, Michael. Did did you come up against Jonathan as well? And 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 if so, what were your experiences of, of playing against? Cadwallon? No, unfortunately, Dom, I didn't. I think because when right. I was away, I was away to Turkey when they were uh, both playing in England. Right. And mm. obviously, when Michael was playing for um, United, I was at Leicester. I think for two years, but we were in the Championship. Right. So I never, yeah, I never came across playing against them too, unfortunately. But I, like everybody, especially uh, Woody as a defender, you know, I used to, I used to watch him, especially when he went to uh, Madrid. Unfortunately, injury killed him. Um, but when he signed there, he was the best defender in the world at that time, you know. So I was looking into him, how he was playing, and all that. I always liked him, both of them. But meeting them is even better because you understand how and why they had the successful careers they had because the way they conduct themselves. You know, and uh, for them to translate that in, in, into coaching and give that to the players. Because I think people forget, it's not because you've been a top player, that means you're going to be a good manager or coach. And the way they're doing it, you know, you have to give them credit because there's so many big names they can't manage, you know, because they, they can't translate that to the players. But them two certainly can. So it's, it's, it's very, very good from them. And, and, and just, at Borough last season, season um, yeah. well, no, I was no, just going to say... Tuba was obviously quite a story at Borough last season, ended up as top scorer and championship player of the year. I mean, funny enough, when we had Neil on here, we said, would you have seen that coming? And he said, absolutely not. He said, I love Tuba a bit, but I just couldn't get him to do what I wanted him to do at all. So he said, fair play to Michael Carrick for giving that out of him. Um, not uh, absolutely, you know, yeah. Fair, I think Tuba himself says that as well. You know, he says that yes, he's had, he's had tough times. He's had times mm-hmm. when he didn't really know where his career was going. But my goodness me, he was great last season, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah, and I think, to be fair, credit to both of them because I was there when when, when Tuba was uh, struggling and uh, we had a chat and he was saying to me, like, what do you think I should do? I, I said to him, you should, you have to play. Whatever you go on loan, low league, Europe, you have to play because that's why yeah. it's going to give you confidence and everything. So he went to Greece and done very well. But you have to be honest, the way Warnock wanted him to play, he wasn't delivering. And he was the first one to say it. He wasn't, he wasn't at that time, he wasn't up to speed. And and uh, and that was, you can argue that was the way the style of play the Gaffa, the Gaffa at the time wanted to play. Maybe. Chuba, uh, Gaffa, uh, Warnock would probably said. You know, I couldn't get out the tune out of him. Yeah, yeah. Too bad, yeah. Too bad would be the first to admit as well. He wasn't at it at that time, you know. But yeah. you have to give credit to, to Michael and to but because, you know, to come back and, 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 and be the top scorer in the league and the best player in the league, you have to give him credit. But mentally, he's always been strong and he's always been, you know, putting the smile on his face, working hard, believing in his own ability. And I'm not surprised he's successful. But when, when we were there together and, and, and with the gaffer, he, he did struggle. But credit to him to come back as strong as he did. Yeah, another current Borough player, Sol's Dale Fry, who, who's who's kind of been in and around the first team picture now for so long at Borough. Was, yeah. was he seventeen? Was he when he when he made his debut at Preston? I think under I talk or anchor, and you think of all that's changed at Middlesbrough in those years since. Um, Dale's last season was frustrating because he got the injury yeah. that ruled him out for the last couple of months. How how good is Fry? How good is he now? And and how good can he be? Because he's still he's still young, isn't he? Yeah, and to be fair with you, Dom, I don't, I don't think the Middlesbrough fan would be happy for me to say that he, sh- he, sh- he shouldn't be at, at Middlesbrough now. He should be playing in the Premier League, and that's no disrespect to, to 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 the club, of course. But like you said, when he came out, he was very, very good, young. He needed time. He played so many games for the club and in the Championship, and unfortunately, he had a few injury, change of manager, and all this. So, and last season was very frustrating for him, but. What a player and what a guy. And he's down to earth, want to learn, asking questions all the time. You know, he's, he's, he should be playing in the Premier League, in my opinion, 100%. Um, but he can be 
as good as he want. And that's that's down to Delphi how good he want to be because he need to have more confidence in himself. And that's why I always say to him, you know, you you you're a very good player, but you need you need to believe in that. And I think he need to, and I'm sure Marco will get that out of him. He need to to have a manager who believe in him and tell him to go and express himself. And I'm sure he, he, he will be back at his best. And but for me, he should be playing Premier League already. I remember Woodgate saying that to us, didn't he, Scott at Rockcliffe when he when he came back in and he said exactly that really that Dale just needs an arm around the shoulder really and a bit Definitely. a bit more encouragement. Last one for me, because um, I don't want to keep you for too much. Really appreciate your time so much. No problem. But, um, I mean, if you look back at, at the whole Borough kind of experience, what was it Was it a pleasant surprise in that, was it much better than maybe you thought it would be? I mean, obviously, when you came up, you didn't know the contract was going to be there, probably mm-hmm. didn't know what the club was all about. Yes, you'll have played at the Riverside, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. but... You know, did it did it surprise you in terms of the whole experience? Yeah, massively, Scott. Because you know, you can you see it from far, and you know, in, in this country, you sort of know what are the the the, the good clubs in terms of family clubs. Yeah. They will the, how the fans are and everything. And and Middlesbrough always been up there, definitely. I know so many people who played for the club and always said the same thing about the people working behind the scene, the fans, and everything. But. To be honest, it was definitely a surprise when I walked in there, the, the, the way everything was and the way the whole club t- 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 took me on. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I knew how, how good it would be. Uh, so mm. it was special. Honestly, Scott, I, I always said that every time I talk about the club and you guys know, you know, I play for so many different clubs who are in Europe as well. But my, my two favourite, it, it's always been Middlesbrough and Cardiff because, you know, mm. it's been special. And, and especially because it was a so a short period of time I played for yeah. the club as well. But the ways it make me feel, and, and it, it was like I, I played there for like 10 years, you know, so it's always going to be a special pl- place for uh, um, in my heart, this football club. You, you went back to Cardiff, so would would you like, or maybe foresee coming back to Middlesbrough at some point in the future in, in, in one role or another? Well, I think it would be difficult, though, because um, Carrick is doing so well. So, you know, and I, and I wish you keep going and carry on and, and, and take them to the poem and, and stay there for years and, and do well. But listen, I would, I would, I would definitely no said no because, you know, the club has been so good to me as a player. So if I can work for the club at any, any level at any time, I'd be, I'd be absolutely buzzing. So we'll see what happens. Brilliant. We'll have, we'll have Sol, Sol Bamba as manager in 20 years' time with a 93-year-old Neil Warnock as his number two. <laughs> I take that all day long, but Warnock won't be my number two. He'd be the sport director. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know for a fact if he was sporting director, he'd end up being the manager. He couldn't take a hand off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well, thanks so, so much for your time, Sol. We really do appreciate it. Um, and, and especially, you know, it's great to speak because it's clear how much your time at Borough meant to you. And, and as we said at the start, we know the fans think as highly as, of you as, as you did at your time at the club. So so thanks again for your time. Best of luck to everything in the future. Keep in touch and, and hopefully we will see you at the at the club at some point in the future in, in one role or another. I hope so. Thank you very much for everything. Honestly, the, the thanks, minutes we've been well, in touch have been very good as well. So I, I want to thank you. Scott, you're brilliant. Thank you so much.